on the heat-drenched practice fields of America. Football teams throughout the land are preparing for yet another grueling season of frustrating losses and painful disappointment. Let's see how the NFC will make us lose faith in the Shield this year. I think we have reached the point of Cowboys' insufferability once again. Turns out Ezekiel Elliott is less of a head case and more of a walking incarceration than any of us realized this offseason. To no one's surprise, nothing was done about it because he wasn't charged and can run a football. Unfortunately, Zeke spun poorly on the NFL's Wheel of Discipline and is out for six games. Lucky Whitehead, on the other hand, he's a troublemaker. It's time to cut his useless ass. Oh, you're saying he didn't actually commit a crime? Well, fuck him. He needed to be punished because reasons. Jerry Jones only makes decisions in the best interest of the Cowboys. They're standing by that decision. They're probably going to choke again in the playoffs as they run into a guy like Aaron Rodgers again. All this drama over a fucking boat party. You would have thought that New York suffered another terrorist attack if you heard all of the talking heads ripping OBJ for that random excursion. But it doesn't matter if he choked in the playoffs last year. Odell wants to be paid that cash money. He's a transcendent talent, and he has to deal with Eli's derping on a weekly basis. The offense looks stacked but a lot of that based on what-ifs. If they can do something with the ball, especially on the ground, they can win the division. Unfortunately, they have to deal with Ben McAdoo bumbling around on the sidelines pretending to be an NFL coach. For the last time, I am not converting to the church of Carson Wentz just yet. The guy had about five good games and then regressed to the mean for the rest of the year. You can't tell me that this guy is a future star when I can count his great performances on one fucking hand. Regardless, the hype surrounding this team is real once again. Alshon Jeffrey and Tory Smith are here to probably underachieve dramatically, just like every other Eagle signing in this decade, and Andy Reid Light will probably be sitting around grabbing his jock as usual. Like every other year, the promise of a strong Eagle season will be smothered by a divisional teabagging faster than you can say Aguilar. You thought this team was going in the right direction for once. You thought the tire fire that was their organization was finally being doused. Bitch, you thought wrong. The train went full force into the station and triggered a 7 on the Richter scale. The GM got fired for dubious reasons and the team anonymously called him a drunk to the Washington Post. Kirk Cousins demanded a trade and was told to go to timeout because Dan Snyder is a petty little shit. Doug Williams is here to become a puppet to the meddlesome Bruce Allen. It was the literal equivalent of throwing stones in glass houses. Only this time Cousins is probably fucking off west the first chance he gets. The window is about to quickly slam shut when it's barely even cracked. Get used to the shit show again, guys. It's going to be here for a while to come. You like that? You like that? Are you ready for the most laughable quarterback controversy in recent history? Look no further than the Bears, a team that inexplicably threw 15 million per year at a guy who hasn't thrown a meaningful pass in two years. Then said team panicked at the draft and overpaid dramatically to move up one spot to pick another goddamn quarterback. But it's okay because Mitch Trubisky is a project that's going to take time to develop. I'm sorry, but when you hit the NFL level, you're at least expected to hold on to the ball without spilling your spaghetti all over the field, especially as a top three pick. Now your overpaid desperation heave is pouting like a little bitch because he suffers from the Dunning-Bruger effect. Your team sucks, you're going to be near the bottom of the league again, you're going to waste another year of Jordan Howard, and you can't wait for your owner to die. Have fun in the abyss. There comes a time when a team should simply roll up into a ball and die. The Lions were at this point years ago. A team that squeaked into the playoffs and whimpered in the first round yet again. A team that perfectly epitomizes the misery and dilapidation as the city it represents. The Motor City is going into a sports dark age soon and the Lions will be leading the charge. Calvin Johnson did the right thing and got the hell out of this black hole while he still had some semblance of a soul left. We will find out how lucky he was when Matt Stafford gets another wide receiver killed. Or when the Packers lord over them yet again. You know you are hungry for more. You know you make the rest of the NFC North your bitch. But there is something gnawing at your conscience. That queasy, indigestible feeling of an inevitable playoff disappointment. That thing happens to be Packers management. That management that is coasting on the transcendent talent of Aaron Rodgers to where they do next to nothing to improve a team in dire need of defensive help. Look at all of these game-breaking transactions they've made. Martellus Bennett here to lord over the Bears yet again. An aging defensive tackle and a shitload of draft picks. Time to boost Aaron's Thetan levels to protect his health again. Put on the cheeseheads and play the motherfucking Packerina. 
one of the most tortured franchises in football suffered yet another blow when they finally led AP out to slaughter, effectively wasting yet another stellar career. Last season was pure Vikings, getting people's hopes up by going 5-0 to start off, then falling apart due to injuries and losing 8 of 10. This year, they are probably going to somehow up the ante. They will probably collapse like the Metrodome or suffer terrible injuries because Vikings. Their stadium is a literal killer of fans' hopes, dreams, and shit tons of birds. Don't worry though, it's only a matter of time before the outrageous cost of it rears its ugly head on the taxpayers. Skull in this year, we ask ourselves the ultimate question. How does a team recover from one of the most spectacular choke jobs in human existence? If we delve into Falcons history, the team has underachieved after strong seasons the year before. But if there's a team that can try to buck this trend, it's this squad and this offense. The defense will hopefully become stronger, led by a guy who should play with a framed photo of his grandma on him at all times. Devontae Freeman said he should have been Super Bowl MVP though. Bitch, learn how to make blocks and then we'll talk about what ifs. That was as tone deaf as passing the ball on second down. You also get to move to the literal equivalent of Goatsy as well. Have fun clenching like your roof does. When you thought Jerry Richardson couldn't get any more laughable after putting a statue of himself outside of the stadium, this offseason told you to hold its drink. He was quite unhappy with the way his precious veterans were treated and the team fell to total shit last season. The main solution here is to fire the GM. Several weeks before training camp and after Buffalo poached everyone with a dam. When Buffalo is beating you to the punch, there is no hope. You can only bring back your old mediocre GM and pretend like you're Chemical Ali and say everything is fine. Cam Newton says otherwise, believing it's in his best interest to keep running the football instead of getting destroyed in the pocket. Funny, I thought he was best at walking out of things. But you've got Julius Peppers again. Old ass Julius Peppers. An 8-8 eight and eight season awaits you. Okay, so you're in the death throes of mediocrity, despite having one of the better quarterbacks of his generation. You may have one year left of him before he leaves Bourbon Street for greener pastures. You need a symbol. Something that's going to inspire your fan base to believe that you're going all in. That answer is AP. A nearly washed up high mileage lemon of an AP. This is the kind of move that uninspired and lazy GMs make to pretend to themselves that they are still contenders. The Saints have been the epitome of this thinking for years now. Keep on pretending that you're still relevant, because once Drew Brees leaves, bye bye The creamsicles seem to have finally gotten their heads out of their asses and have some semblance of promise once again. If famous Jameis can become more consistent, if the running game can return to the form it had a few years ago, if Mike Evans can continue to be one of the best wideouts in the game, this team could make some noise. Main issue here, it's a lot of what ifs. There's also the what ifs regarding regression, Doug Martin pouting like a bitch, and Famous Jameis being... Famous Jameis. According to all of the talking heads, you guys are the revered champions of the offseason. Cherish it. It's been this franchise's most notable accomplishment in 15 years. Another year of the great desert mirage that is the Cardinals commences in the total hope that Carson Palmer just had an aberration instead of reverting to his Oakland Raider form. It doesn't matter if David Johnson is one of the more electrifying running backs in the league. If they can't get consistency in the passing game, they aren't going anywhere. The only hope is for Big Ben to pull a Brett Favre and defect to join up with old Bruce Arians in Phoenix. A quarterback is all this team really needs to go far this year. Go hire yourselves a shaman to make sure you have a good one. No, the Rams didn't totally shit the bed by throwing everything they had for a splash move last year. They're just pretending that Jared Goff isn't an absolute disaster and throwing him out there to probably suck some more once again. Maybe he can actually throw a five-yard pass without spontaneously combusting this year. Leading the charge this year is the literal equivalent of a babality as head coach and Todd Gurley, who will hopefully not have his career absolutely fucked up by being in this wreck of a franchise. Also, your stadium has suffered delays in construction, forcing you to play another year in the Cavernous Coliseum. You will probably be at the bottom of the division again and somehow lose two more games to the 49ers. It could be worse though. You could be the Chargers. <laughs> Last season was a total disaster, but the Niners now have a new batch of assholes at the forefront. John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. Yes, the mega douche is so tone deaf that he is trusting the organization to the guy who near single-handedly blew a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl and a puppet who took the Matt Millen trail. Oh, but they allowed us to laugh at the Bears! 
That's the problem. It's the bears. That's like taking advantage of the gullible autistic kid at school. Nobody is impressed. What else have you done to wow us? It sure as shit isn't going to be picking up the straps from the bears at QB. Don't worry, Niners. You're going to be so horrible this year that nobody is going to be taking a knee. This is the time in our lives where we determine whether or not Richard Sherman has a point or is just throwing shit against the wall to piss everyone off. This offseason, he urged his player brethren to go on strike against ownership in the near future. On one side, players are entitled little shits anymore. On the other, they are getting completely screwed over in terms of guaranteed money and being cut on a dime. I.E., they're like the rest of us. Personally, I can't wait for this shit show to commence because it may finally expose the NFL as the joke that it has become. But in the meantime, the Seahawks have games to play. They still need to replace Beast Mode to reach their full potential. What is their answer? Feast Mode, whom will probably be injured again by week five. Prepare for the incredible hot takes, 12th man. You're gonna be getting a lot of them. With the NFC, it's a little less obvious for a heavy favorite. The NFC East is going to be a lot tighter thanks to the Elliott suspension. I think the Giants squeak it out. The North goes, once again, to the Packers on the back of Aaron Rodgers. I think the Falcons buck historical trends and take the NFC South again, and the West goes to the Seahawks. Wildcard slots are taken by the Buccaneers and Cowboys. I think a lot of playoff spots are going to be pretty tight in this conference. Let's hope for something good this year. Oh wait, this is the NFL. They'll probably just flaunt all of their money in our faces again. (laughs) 